Welcome to the Warrior Woodshop. I'm Mr. Rodaway, and in this video, we're going to build this bottle opener, wall mounted bottle opener. This is in our little series of first year projects, scrap wood projects, less than $10 projects, whatever you want to call this. But we do use this as an opportunity for our students to learn how to do rabbits and grooves, and then get an opportunity to use a little bit of the nail gun. And some of the students will even actually make multiple pieces and get glue up credit rather than having this as one board. So the first thing we've got to do is find our material and you need a board that is about six inches wide rough and about 18 inches long for the backboard and you need a board that is about four inches rough again by about 18 inches long for all of the uh, cap holders. And then there's a piece of plexiglass that slides into the groove to finish this off. You mount yourself a bottle opener up here on the top and you mount it to the garage wall or basement or back patio post. Rough cut measurement only needs to be 18. Since this is only a rough cut we don't need to have any fancy or perfectly square measuring tool. Once I get these both marked out I can line up and make my rough cut and then we'll head over to the planer for the next step. All right, step number two in the milling process is to go over to the planer and get them down to surface thickness. As you can tell, in this particular scrap wood, I happen to have two different thicknesses, so we will zero out the planer with the thicker piece and then make them all match up to our planer block, which also is the same thickness as our rabbits and dado blade setup, which you'll see later on. Make sure in the order wood shop you turn the dust collector on. set to the thickest board. We're going to rotate the turn, handle about a half turn and repeat the procedure until it matches up with the gauge block. And there we are. And before we can do any table sawing and ripping the width, we've got to have that straight edge. So we're here at the joiner. We're going to take care of that before we head over to the table saw. It's always a good idea to mark the edge of the joiner. Remember, you don't have to joiner both edges because we're going to be table sawing the scrap off anyway. All right, we're here at the table saw. I've got my marked edges for the joiner, or the or joiner. First thing we need to do is get our blade height set. Now remember in the Warrior Wood Shop, before you guys can go ahead and hit the switch, you need to make sure that you have a setup check by the instructor. The narrow board is three and a half inches. We're going to set the fence to that. And since there's barely enough room to get my hand in here, I'm going to be using the push stick on this cut. So I'm going to lower the guard and go ahead and make it. All right, set that one off to the side. Since we know they're the same thickness, I don't have to worry about the blade height. I can reset for the backboard to five and a half. Put my joiner edge against the fence and repeat the process. And before we can do any layout, we need to make sure we got a perfectly 90 degree edge. And since we adjusted the edge with the joiner, that probably affected the angle. Visually, it might look okay, but go ahead and square up the end. Put your joiner edge against the fence and take off just enough to cut off and square up the end. Normally we don't encourage students to square up both ends because you're going to be cutting it to length and you're going to end up tossing that piece anyways. But because of the nature of the small pieces in this project, we need you to square up both ends of the narrower piece. All right, we're back at the workbench to do some layout and one of the things that we have to really be concerned with is the size of these pieces. We, it is extremely dangerous to cut this groove on this small of a piece. So students, make sure you follow the directions on your packet because we need to do all of the work while this is a larger board. If you cut this into smaller pieces, you're going to have to basically start over. So from the squared up end, my backboard is 16 and a half. And since this is a finished cut, we're going to go ahead and use the tri-square 
to mark our line. All right, now we're over here that we got our layout done. We're over here at the dado cross cutting table saw. We've got a three quarter dado blade set up. First thing we need to do is make sure the blade height is uh, set to the correct height, and this one it is. It should be halfway through. Students, don't assume that just because everybody's supposed to be using three quarters on this project that the last person's got to set it up correctly. Now that we've got our blade height set, the next thing we've got to do is get the depth or width of the cut, whatever you want to call it, set up. So what we do is bring our stop block up against the blade, which will essentially cut a rabbit or a dado on the end of the board just so it only has two sides. If you don't have this setup and you're out there in YouTube land or you're doing this as a virtual project, this can be done with a router and router table or it could be done with the counter bore screw and plug method like we used in the wall shelf project. Once that's done, it doesn't matter which side. The side that you cut the rabbit on will be the inside of your trough for the bottle caps. So think about which side you want in and out. Most of the time it shouldn't matter. We're going to keep one hand to keep it tight against the fence, and the other hand is going to do the pushing, whatever's comfortable for you. Since this is set up on one end of the board and we need to wrap it on both ends, it's real simple, just rotate it around. Make sure you do not flip, you rotate, because otherwise, again, you'll be starting over. I'll just repeat the procedure. Here at the table saw and we're going to do another type of non through cut this time we're going to cut the groove for our plexiglass so the first thing we need to do is set our blade height just like any other cut and we want this to match the height of the rabbit we just cut with the cross cutting saw so I'm going to lower the blade get a position what I like to do is position the board on top of the blade everything's off and my hands are away from the switch and then I lower the blade height until the board just touches the table and that way I know they're at the same height. Once that's completed we're going to set the fence to three inches, lower the guard, have a setup check just like normal, explain to the instructor what you're doing. You will need a push stick since we're under that uh, three inch range or at three inches and there's only a red zone here and we'll just make a groove cut. Now before you walk away from the table saw, you want to make sure that you have a scrap or the piece you're going to use for the, the window or the emptying tray and make sure that it fits. As you can see, this one's just a bit snug. All 1 8 plexiglass and 1 8 blades aren't always the same thickness, so if that's the case, what we're going to do is just tap this over about a sixteenth of an inch according to our table saw guy and we're going to rerun it. So it should cut just a little bit wider. Nice. You want it to be able to slide in and out like that because that's how you're going to empty the tray. If it happens to fit the first time, you're good to go. We've had both situations depending on which blade we've got installed and which manufacturer of the plexiglass. Alright, now that we've got our non-through cuts completed, it's time to make some more through cuts. So we're going to be back here at the miter saw. We're going to cut off each end, which is our side piece. The middle will end up getting cut to length in a few minutes as our base piece. Now you've got to think about which side of the line or blade is on, so that way you cut exactly the same length. One of the thoughts is if I need this to be exactly the same length, why don't I set up a stop lock? The rule with a stop lock is you must hold the piece that is trapped between the blade and your stop lock. And since this is too small a piece, we're going to have to cut it freehand. So make sure you measure accurately and line up the blade accurately. Finally, paying attention to which side of the line your blade is on because your scrap is in the middle. So one cut will be on the right, one cut will be on the left. Now this piece needs to first off get measured to length and then cut on the miter saw. And it is obviously too small to cut. So we're going to come back with a jig. But beforehand, I'm going to go ahead and cut my backboard to length and take care of that while we're over here. 
All right, it's time for a reality check versus a theory check. In theory, this board, this bottom board, should be four and five eighths. You can see that I haven't cut it to length yet because we're not in theory, we're in reality. For this board to be four and five eighths, these have to be exactly three quarters of an inch thick, and this rabbit cut has to be exactly three eighths of an inch thick. So if I was to go ahead and pre-cut it, these weren't the right length, might be too wide or too narrow. So this is your chance, why it's still extra long, to make some adjustments. So one method would be to, to add and subtract the two numbers. In this case, it happens to be two inches. Well, another way would be to measure the two rabbits together, which are just a little bit less than three quarters, so 11 sixteenths. From five and nine sixteenths, yeah, again, ugly math, I know. But the more we measure, the more we have a chance for mistake. So what we've done is taken the two boards and put them back to back. And I'm going to line up this edge with the edge of my piece. Now I'm going to measure from that point and realize that we're, and make sure this stays right here, that we're at 4 and 13 sixteenths. I could have done some math, but then we're relying on two or three measurements plus our calculations to come up with the correct answer. This is a small parts cutting jig we've created for three and a half inch material. So it's got a stop lock and a clamp that allows me to hold my work without my hand having to be up here so I can hold the clamp or the jig outside of here and go ahead and line my mark up. Try to be as accurate as possible because if we're too short your container is going to be narrower than your base. You need to make sure you leave the blade down because the scrap is actually going to fall a little bit and there's even more potential to bounce it around. So follow the safety rules of keeping the blade down until it's come to a complete stop. Alright, time for the almighty dry fit. We're just a hair bit wide on the base piece. So depending on the width, th these are, if it doesn't match exactly, there is ways to remedy this. Since our baseboard is just a 30 second wide, we're going to go over to the joiner, take one more pass. If it's a 16th or larger too wide, you can go over to the table saw and trim it. If your collection basket is too wide, you have to go back to the small parts cutting jig and shorten up this piece either on the miter saw or you do it with the band saw, whatever you're more comfortable with. So take the time for a dry fit so that way you can make everything correctly fit. All right, let's check the fit here. Now that we're back from the joiner, fits like a glove. One of the things, this project may look simple, but it's got a few hidden agendas in it, so to speak, and one of them is teaching the students to measure correctly. So guys, Measure accurately, mark accurately, and your projects will turn out really good. So don't be in a hurry with, the with your measuring. So what I'm going to do is tick mark the top of each side, so that way I know where this basket, collection basket stops. And one of the things we like to do in the Warrior Workshop is to get the students to use as many tools as safely as possible on a project. So we've gotten, what, the table saw, we've gotten the miter saw, we've got the planer, we've got the joiner. Now we're going to throw in the router. And we're even going to throw in the bandsaw because I've decided that the top of this would look a little bit cooler if it had a radius up top. So let me get a bottle of glue here and I'm going to line it up and round over my corners. Line up the edges, trace it. Using the bandsaw we'll follow the curve to make our rounded corners. Next we're going to clean up the edges using the belt sander. But one of the most common mistakes in beginning woodworkers is they want to sand the end grain or miter saw cuts. And yes, we will. But if you start sanding, remember, sanding removes material. And unless you have a jig or a setup, most likely you will not keep this at 90 degrees. So do not sand any of these end grains until it's completely assembled and you're doing your final sanding. So keep that in mind. Now that we're back from the bandsaw and the belt sander, we're going to move over to the router. But I've got a roundover bit 
set up with the bearing and we're going to start just above the mark work our way around the edge we're going to do this on the front side so now is the time to determine which is your front and back remember to go against the rotation in most cases this is counterclockwise on the outside profile You notice we didn't router this it's just a little bit too small of a piece you might be able to but that kicks you're having to hold that and clamps are just getting away so all we're going to do with this one is just give it a light sanding to kind of ease the edge well we'll do that after it's assembled so that way we don't mess with any of our squared edges all right now that we got everything routered shaped that we want it's time to do everybody's favorite job sanding I got some 100, I'll do it again on 150. And then when we're all assembled and done, we'll final it up with some 220. Don't be aggressive with the sander because you can do damage to your project. We are actually at the assembly phase. We're gonna do one more dry fit, make sure everything works out. And again, that fine tuning is gonna pay off. So take your time in that measuring and cutting phase because it'll make the final project from, wow, that's cool too. Whoa, that's cool. You got a wet rag for the glue. Because remember, stain or clear coat won't go through dry glue. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the inside rabbit. I drag it. We don't need much because it's an ingrain joint. The nails are going to help out quite a bit. And do not get any glue inside the groove. Do the best you can. Line the two up. You want to make sure that you don't put a nail in the groove. So I got the groove up. I'm going to apply two nails to the side. I'm going to repeat the procedure for the other side. All right, now that I got that assembled, I'm going to take care of any squeeze out. If you happen to get some in the groove, take a piece of cardboard, business card, your student ID, because you can clean that off. Make sure you clean that groove out, because once the glue dries, the plexiglass shield is not going to fit in there. All right, so the final step, is to get it attached to the back as far as the assembly step. Make sure we got the grooves that are up away from the backboard and put, since this is a face-to-face -face glue joint, that's really all we need. Get everything lined up and attach it from the bottom or from the back. Make sure that lines up real good. So flush it, pull your finger back, put one nail at the top, flip it over. Same on the other side. All right, again, clean up any glue squeeze out. You want enough to do the job, but in this case, you probably don't want it to where it's squeezing out. If you don't have access to a nail gun, you could screw and countersink from the backside, or you could just put it in a clamp and let it dry for a couple hours. That'll hold itself too. If you don't have access to the dado, you could do this with a screw and plug or countersink if you didn't mind them showing. So at this point is where we're gonna do some of our final sanding. Now that takes care of my 150, I'm gonna repeat it. But, or 100, excuse me. Now before I move up the line, I'm gonna get some cherry putty, actually, since this is on the redder side of the board. Cherry, walnut, or natural, depending on what color your wood is. Think about the final outcome, not the type of wood. A little pro tip there. All right, to use the putty, it looks like toothpaste. So just put a little bit of a pea-sized drop on your finger and then apply it to the nail holes and then take off as much as you can. Someone on a woodworking forum asked once, is using putty a sign of bad craftsmanship? And unfortunately, putty has gotten that name is, oh, just caulk it, just putty it over, it'll be fine. Even good woodworkers are going to have to use putty. We're covering up nail holes. We have small imperfections in the material. Okay, It is not against the rules or you are a bad woodworker if you use putty. If you're using putty as a way to cover up shoddy craftsmanship, that's where the bad rep comes in. 
And now it's okay to sand the end grain and everything because it's final attached, it's not going to affect the assembly. And remember, all sanding is not done with the power sanders. Go back through and touch up where the power sander couldn't get and give it a once over. You do not want to leave these rings. They need to be sanded off. Granted, these nail holes aren't invisible, but that sure beats having a big black hole there. All right, there we've got it. Here is our, the one we made in the video. Here is our prototype to make sure everything fit and work. As you can tell, attention to detail makes a huge difference. Just rounding over the edges, softening everything with sandpaper, cutting a radius corner, down to choosing the putty. We know we're going to put a clear coat on this and it's going to get a red, awesome red look when we're done. So that's why we went with the cherry putty. If I'm going to paint the thing, color putty really doesn't matter. All I still have to do is take this over to the finishing room, put a uh, couple coats of lacquer. We're going to use a spray can lacquer. And then we'll mount our bottle opener and hang it on the wall. All right. Back from cutting this, the plexiglass. And this has been in and out of the finish room for the last couple days. Got a lot of dry overnight. I'd say that about puts a wrap on this project. Our local vendor was out of the bottle openers, so we'll get that eventually. But after looking at it without the bottle opener on there, this could be utilized for so many different things. Adjust, you know, brochures, menu cards, adjust the width accordingly, the height accordingly. This is just, it's a cool little project that utilizes dado slash rabbits and grooves and handling some small pieces and just accuracy and measuring. Learning how to you know, make it exactly fit. So these little projects are under 10 bucks, if not under five, but they teach some of the basic skills that you need to move on to the bigger furniture. So don't write these projects off, have a little fun, get used to using the tools where you get better. And when you move on to things like nightstands and end tables, and bookshelves, you've got some, this ain't the first project under your belt. So have fun with this one. Hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel. Like this video if you did and hit the bell so you get notifications when we post more like this. Now thanks for watching. Go out and make some sawdust.